It was there that I discovered women in leadership and the importance of putting yourself out there and having confidence in putting yourself out there. So that's why I ran for my local union presidency. But it's also the reason why I thought the Canadian Teachers Federation was so amazing that I thought, I want to be part of this. Hey there, and welcome back to Your Source, connecting you to the stories behind Canada's education ecosystem. I'm your host, Juliana Mako, and it's my pleasure to kick off the 2023-2024 school year with a new episode featuring Heidi Yetman, the president of the CTF FCR. Heidi Yetman is the former president of the Quebec Provincial Association of Teachers, commonly known as CUPAT, and recently began her two-year term as president of the CTF FCR on July 14, 2023. Before becoming the president of QPAT, Heidi was president of the Pearson Teachers Union in Montreal after teaching science and art for 23 years at the high school level. She has served as a vice president of the CTF FCR from 2018 to 2019, and again beginning in 2021 before being elected as president designate in July 2022. From 2021 to 2023, she held dual roles of executive liaison for the CTF FCR's advisory committee on the status of women an advisory committee on French as a first language. In this episode, Heidi recounts her journey from classroom teacher in Quebec to an elected leader in education at the local, provincial, and national levels. She also delves into her motivation for pursuing leadership roles, her contributions to advancing gender equality within the leadership of teacher organizations, and ensuring the voice of women is at the table. Heidi reflects on her mentors along the way and shares her advice for aspiring leaders. It is now my pleasure to welcome the president of the CTF FCR, Heidi Yetman. Welcome to the podcast, President Heidi Yetman. Thank, Thank you for joining you. us. So much fun to be here. So we'll talk about your leadership journey and how you got to where you are right now. And we'll just start off with maybe can you let our listeners know who you are and your roles over the past couple of years? Absolutely. So I'm a teacher. I spent 23 years in the classroom in high school, and I taught art and science. I have a degree in art and a degree in science, which is a bit strange, but it actually works really well together. And in the 90s, they had a one-year program to become a teacher. So funny because my mother always said, you should be a teacher. And it didn't interest me until I walked into the classroom. And that's when I realized, oh my God, this is incredible. I loved being with students. I loved, you know, being able to maybe change their minds about certain things and to have a lot of power and responsibility at the same time. But yeah, so I was a, a teacher for 23 years. And in 2012, I decided to go back to university and get my master's degree in art education. And that's where everything changed. That's when I discovered politics. Because I had only done one year in education, this was a place for me to discover philosophy of education and discovered a bunch of philosophers that I thought were really great, like Paulo Freire and Michael Apple, and decided I was going to get more engaged in activism and in my local union. So I ended up on my executive for my local union. Then in 2015, we were in Quebec, we were in negotiations, and we were fighting a government that was trying to put austerity on public services. And when we came out the other end, we, had a, we did finally get a contract. That's when I decided to run for president of my local union. So I ran for president of my local union in 2016, won. And uh, then I moved on to my provincial association, the Quebec Provincial Association of Teachers, uh, in 2019. Meanwhile, I also put my name in to become a vice president of CTF in 2018. So that was my first experience running at a national level. And here I am today. It's crazy. This all started basically in 2016. So it's been short journey, but a really intense journey. So it's been incredible, actually. So you mentioned that you put your name forth to be on the CTF's executive. 
What was it that kind of motivated you to do that? Well, first of all, I have to say that my experience with CTF was very limited at the time. But in 2016, I went to Winnipeg to participate in the Women's Symposium. And I remember asking my union leader for some money to go. And he said, no, we don't do that. So I went on my own dime. I have family in Winnipeg, so I was able to spend time with my parents. But I attended the Women's Symposium in Winnipeg in 2016. And that changed a lot of things. It was there that I discovered women in leadership and the importance of putting yourself out there and having confidence in putting yourself out there. So that's why I ran for my local union presidency. But it's also the reason why I thought the Canadian Teachers Federation was so amazing that I thought, I want to be part of this. And even though I was not on the board of directors, I was very unknown, actually. (laughs) Who is this Heidi Yetman who's arrived? I thought, why not? This is a great way for me to contribute to not just Quebec, but Canada as a Mm -hmm. whole. So that was the reason, I think, is because CTF really taught me a lot over the last few years. But I was so impressed by that women's symposium. And I thought that the Canadian Teachers Federation was doing some amazing things. And I wanted to be part of those amazing things. Right. So some would say you're a trailblazer then. Well, (laughs) that's cool. I like that. Uh, Yeah, I really believe in the Canadian Teachers Federation. So it's amazing for me to be sitting in this chair right now. Mm -hmm. I'm humbled to Mm -hmm. be uh, president of the Canadian Teachers Federation. So a lot of things have happened in a short time. Yes, we're very happy to be here with you. So along that journey, you said a lot happened in a, a short amount of time. Were there people there to help you? What kind of supports were there throughout your journey? Well... That's a really good question. I have to thank Diane Wolischuk for her support. She's somebody who I spoke with, and I will never forget that conversation. I said, you know, I'm thinking about running for my local, but I don't know if I'm qualified. That was what I said. And she said to me, that's what women think. They think they're unqualified. And you are qualified. You've spent 23 years in the classroom you know what's to be a teacher, and that's what this job is about. And so it's something that women have a tendency to do, to go through the list of qualifications and make sure that they've checked every single box. And you will learn as you're working. So she was one of the reasons why I decided to go into leadership in the beginning. But along the way, you have other women around, and men, by the way, that that encourage you, that tell you that, you know, you're doing a good job. And The women that I worked in my local union, I'd have to give them credit as well. We were three women who were going to the meetings across from the school board, which were mostly men, and we worked really hard together to empower each other. Sébastien Jardy, who is the executive director of the Quebec Provincial Association of Teachers, super encouraging, told me that I should run for QPAT president which I did. So there are also male allies that are around that do the same thing, that they help you, they support you, they push you in the right direction. So there's been a lot of people around that have done that. There's been some barriers too, but generally speaking, it's been a really positive journey. And speaking of barriers, could you maybe talk about some of the barriers that you faced? Yeah, well, I was one of the first female local presidents in recent times when I became local president. And I think the school board wasn't used to dealing with a woman. And I think they treated me differently Hmm. than they did the previous president that was a male before me. And that I know because of the staff that was around me. They told me, like, you know, that you're not being treated the same. So there is something to that. But as my son would say, you just do your job. Another big barrier would be children. So I have two children love my two boys. They're now 20 and 23. But I waited till they were, you know, 10 and 12 before even considering uh, going back to school Mm -hmm. and starting my studies. I wanted them to be able to take care of themselves so that uh, I could do those things. So that's, that is a barrier for young women that are mothers uh, to try to, you know, juggle motherhood Mm -hmm. and taking care of children. 
women still today in Canada do 30% more unpaid work than men. So yeah, we juggle all that. So we need more flexibility. We need <laughs> flexibility for women to take on these roles. 75% of the teachers out there are women, and they <laughs> should be represented by women. And their voices are really important at the table. So I'm really proud because we were able to get designated seats for women at CTF a few years back. And I was part of that, along with all the other women that were at that assembly. I'll never take credit for it because we all got up and we spoke at the mic and we got those seats. So really proud of that work. But yeah, there are those kinds of barriers. There are if you are a strong and powerful woman that has strong opinions, sometimes you're looked at as you're complaining. You're not powerful like a man. A man who has strong opinions is just powerful. But a woman with strong opinions, well, you know, she's just complaining. And that's, you know, a very different kind of uh, view mm -hmm. on somebody with strong opinion. So there are barriers out there. Yeah. We even see it in politics. Women are always judged on, oh, look what she's wearing, you know, or how her hair is, whereas, you know, men aren't judged that way. So we still have a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That being said, do you have any advice that you can maybe share with our listeners and aspiring leaders? Well, number one is if you're a teacher in the classroom, you are a leader. The fact that you can lead a classroom of 32 students means that you're a leader. And I think that's really important that teachers recognize that. And I would also say to teachers out there that they should get involved in leadership positions or get involved in, you know, your local union, be on a committee, get your voice heard. Mm -hmm. It's so, so important to hear those voices. Or, you know, you may want to do some leadership within the school board. Even that, there seems to be less women that are in administrative positions at the school board. So get your voice heard. You are a leader and you should have confidence in that. Heidi, thank you so much. A lot of what you said has resonated with me, so I know it'll resonate with our listeners. So thank you. Is there anything else that you want to add or something that we didn't touch upon? I think I'd just like to say again that I'm really humbled to be in this position and I hope that I can be the voice of the 365,000 teachers across this country. It's an amazing opportunity. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us for this episode. Be sure to keep an eye out for our next episode with Heidi and special guest Sherry Graydon of Informed Opinions for discussion on women's representation in Canada's Parliament. Thank you for tuning in to Your Source.